Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All Things Middle Earth here with part one of the video series that will take us through the entirety of the Return to Moria, everything you need to know to experience this game to its fullest. Now I've played this game for over 60 hours at this point and progressed almost to the very end, but I wanted to start going back through and putting out some guides to cover the early game material for those that are just getting started and maybe having a little bit of difficulty. In this video, we're gonna be covering the Western Halls, which is the first area of the game where you drop through the floor into Moria, all the way to the Elven Cavern, where you find the secret entrance into the mines. There's a lot to cover, but I'm gonna have it broken up as cleanly as possible. So if you've already played a little bit and wanna skip ahead, I'll have chapters in the description down below. So you can go to the description or just in your play bar and click ahead if you want to find something you're looking for or maybe skip into the first little bit so you're beyond the very first tutorial parts. Now, one last thing before we jump into the actual video, if you guys are interested in seeing more Return to Moria content, hit that like button on this video and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on future Return to Moria content like part two of this series, which will take us all the way from the entrance of the mines to the crystal depths. Now we've got a lot to cover, so buckle in and let's go ahead and jump into the video. Now, first up, we have the hearth or the stone hearth in this case. The hearth is the heart of the base, and you can literally not build anything else around it without a hearth. So you need hearths, and the Let Us Rebuild one here, and we can use the hearths to make food as well as process coal, which we can use as a fuel source, and it's needed for other recipes as well. So if you really find yourself hurting for coal, you can process it in the hearth. But the big thing here is going to be making meals that, assuming you have a meal table, they'll then move to your meal table and be able to be eaten by your characters. After the hearth, we have the bedroll. The bedroll is very simple. You build it, you claim it, and if you die, probably when you die, depending on, again, even as if you're a veteran like survival game player, sometimes it just crazy stuff happens. So when you happen to die, you will respawn on the bedroll, which is very nice. So make sure you've slept and claimed a bedroll, and you can even put bedrolls down closer to where you're kind of actively at in the game. So you can, for example, go to your inventory and build a camp hearth, which is a smaller version of that hearth, and then build a bedroll around it. So uh, it's never a bad idea to keep these types of materials in your inventory. The wood scrap, stone, and coal needed are very, very cheap. So I typically keep a stack of all these. So wherever I'm at, I can build a camp hearth, I can build a bed, I can build a meal table so I can make meals, and a few other things we'll talk about in a second, but those are some necessities that you kind of always want to have the ability to make in your inventory. Now, next up is the furnace. Once you rebuild the furnace, you're going to be able to smelt down the iron ores you get into iron ingots, which are going to allow you to make different types of weapons or tools, which we'll cover in a second, as well as rebuilding the forge. This does require coal to be used as a fuel source. So again, whether you mine the coal or make it in your hearth, you can use that to smelt down the different ores you're going to find throughout the game. Now, at this point, the game is going to have you go mine an iron vein. And I want to make a quick note on mining very quickly. Uh, when you mine, you'll have an option to sing if you're mining ore, and if you do so, you'll get a status effect called Mining Frenzy that will make you not use stamina when you are mining. So even if you don't like the singing, if you want to turn the, the voice volume off, you can, but definitely sing when you're mining because it's going to give you a positive status effect. And once you do mine all that iron out, you then put it into the uh, the furnace, you use the coal that's in the starter base, you're going to have the iron ingots, which you can then use to rebuild the forge, which allows you to make kind of basic tools and weapons. So starting out, you're going to want to build an iron sword, and Iron Hill's shield as quickly as possible. Now, other things you wanna build with the iron is the iron hammer. This uses just two iron ingots and four wood scraps, and you can use these to rebuild broken dwarven statues, which then give you recipes to build things like armor and better weapons, which we'll show in a second. But for now, get a couple of iron and build an iron hammer and keep it in your hotbar. The next thing the forge we're gonna look at is Ori's key or really any of the dwarven company's keys. So if you find different chests in the game, for example, this one in the starting area, that is Ori's chest. If you click on it, it'll be locked at, uh, at the very beginning. It'll give you the recipe to make that key. So once you've interacted with the chest, you can then go and for Ori's, it's very cheap. It's just one iron. As you progress, you'll find different dwarven uh, chests like Balan's chest near the very end and you'll be able to make that with kind of more rare types of metals that you that you have throughout the game. So make that key, unlock the chest, and that's one more thing off of the to-do list. Now moving on, we have the ruined map stone and the map stone. The map stone is how you fast travel in the game. Very, very simple. If you have multiple map stones, you can travel to wherever they are on the map. The issue is the black diamonds needed to make the map stones are very, very rare. So it'll be a hot second before you're traveling around the map very quickly. But bear in mind, there is a way to do that, and it won't be that long before you're at least able to travel back and forth from a couple of your bases. Uh, but this ruined one right here will be rebuilt with one black diamond, which we do get near the end of this video. But for now, just sit tight. There is fast traveling. You just got to walk around for a little bit longer. Now, there are a few other types of chests. We talk about the different dwarven chests, like Ori's chest over here. There are two other types of chests in the game. Number one, there are just wooden chests that you can build in your in your settlements and you can put anything in these chests once you put things in the chest they are then able to be interacted with or rather used as a part of your own inventory so for example if i want to build anything in the in the wood and stone menu or the essentials and crafting menu 
I have access to everything in all three of those chests, as well as my own inventory, including pallets that we have. So we have pallets that have wood scraps or coal here, everything in range of the hearth, kind of all pools together, which is very, very nice. You don't have to go through chests finding what resources you're looking for. You just go build whatever you want. And assuming you have that, again, I don't have 194 wood scraps in my inventory. There's no, there's no way. So uh, those are just pulling from different chests, which is very, very convenient. So those are one type of chest. The other type of chest, and I'll put it up on the screen really quickly, are the different Orcus chests you can find in the game. And you find the keys to these chests by breaking down the banners that are in the middle of these kind of Orcus encampments. So very simple, but it doesn't tell you how to do that. So if you found those chests and not been able to unlock them, that's how you do it. Break the banner, grab the key, open them up, and that's how you start getting some more rare materials early on. Now, a note on the meal table, like I said, use a stone hearth to make simple meals or, you know, complex meals, whatever you're making. And those meals will go onto the meal table. However, they can't be taken or put in your inventory, at least for now. We will make an oven in the next video, but today we just have the meal table and meals that are left out in the meal table for too long will spoil. So don't leave things out that you're not going to eat. Just make one thing or two things at a time that you're going to consume immediately. Because if you leave them out for too long, they'll spoil and you've just wasted food, which is not good. Now, a few other useful things you can build that they don't make you build or rebuild in this area that you should definitely know about. The first one is pallets. It does start with a pallet, but you can build pallets for any kind of bulk resource. So we can do wood, elven wood, stone, coal, and then all of the different types of ores, either in their ore form or in their ingot form. So down the road in our future bases, we're going to hopefully have just pallets all over the place, not all over the place, but we'll have a storage area with every major resource type that we have. And again, if we have them stored there, we can use them to craft anything. If they're on the pallet, we have access to it. So pallets are a must and definitely help keep things organized. Next up, and probably one of the most underrated things in the game is the repair smithy. Now the repair, it doesn't tell you how to make this and you have to hopefully have figured out if you've been struggling a little bit. The repair smithy just takes five iron and it allows you to use scrap metal to repair anything that you have that can be repaired. So if you're using the iron sword, chances are it's probably broken several times. And if you're like me early on, I built like five of these before we kind of looked and figured out you can repair these things. So anything that 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 takes durability damage can be repaired very, very cheaply. So it's just five iron. Definitely build a repair smithy in your first base and really every other base. That's another thing that with a camp hearth, if you're out traveling and just, you know, want to build a quick little shelter, you put a camp hearth down and have five iron with you. You can build a smithy and repair all your gear, all your armor out in the field without having to travel back home. Now, a couple more things, as you see here, we put up a couple of walls and a door. This is really important because at different times, your bases will be raided by goblins and they will try to attack you and attack your stuff and, and really break your hearth and kind of destroy your settlement. So if you have walls up and it's all secure and you have a door up, that means they have to go through those things first. You can even put multiple doors up if you want to, if you feel kind of nervous about it. But if you don't have one of the doors open, they'll just come right in. And especially if you're not home, they're just gonna go after and try and destroy your stuff. So put a, a door up and put some lights up so you can actually see what's going on. If they are here and fighting, you wanna be able to kind of see them and attack back. So some simple things like walls, doors, lights, don't tell you to make, but it's very useful. So I'd put lots of those up wherever you can. Now, one more note on building in this area before we move on to some other, other features in the game. Uh, we have the deconstruct menu here. So if you press X on your keyboard, you can go to the deconstruct menu and just by clicking, we're gonna be able to break anything in this area that we want to, and we will be refunded 100% of the resources. So we got back 10 scraps of wood there, and five iron ingots. So if we go back to the build menu, we want to rebuild those things. It is five for the repair smithy, and it's going to be 10 for the meal table. So you can move things around if you want to. If you don't like where things are at, feel free to demolish them, move them around, or just kind of cycle resources around. If you wanted to repair your tools and then need the iron to make something else, you can do that. Uh, but feel free to deconstruct that there's no, there's no penalty for doing so. And next up is the combat in the game. I hear some enemies outside. It's a great time to show you guys how that works. If you use your left click, you're going to put your shield up, or if you don't have a shield out, you're just going to put whatever weapon you have up in the air to block. This actually works very well. And if you learn to time it, it's for your, I think it's fairly comfortable so you can block attacks and not take any damage. Uh, it will take more durability damage on your weapons if you do that though. So I would highly suggest using a, a shield to block attacks when they come in and save the durability of your weapons for actually fighting. Now, after blocking, we're gonna look at attacking and you do this by just clicking down on the left click button. You can also hold down to do power attacks. So we're gonna go outside here and see if we can find some, some wolves or something. And oh, just like that, some goblins who decided they wanna play with this a little bit. So here you can see I can hold the shield up, gonna block every attack. We're getting zeros. It's actually very forgiving, almost broken. Uh, even if they're behind me um, and he attacks me here, I'm not taking any damage. So it's very, very broken. So use that to your advantage if you want to or not. But other than durability damage, there's no cost for doing this over and over again. And after they've done their attacks, I'll take a swing and put my shield back up almost immediately. And you'll learn to time how many attacks you can do or if you have time to charge up and do a power attack like that. But it's fairly simple and I've enjoyed it a pretty good amount. 
There's also some combat rolling you can do by pressing the control button. So if I do that, I can roll through here. Now, I think this is more, probably more con comfortable on a controller. Uh, I don't find it amazing in the keyboard, but uh, if there is a situation where you feel like you want to quickly roll somewhere or dodge out of the way, you can do that with the control button. Now, speaking of combat, there is armor in the game. So as you can see here, we do have this armor on, at least some of it on. And uh, we'll kind of get a good show here for how that works, but it is the blue bar that is down here. So if you look right here, we have this kind of blue bar. And basically what that means is that we're going to take damage or our armor is going to take damage before we do. So if I sit here, you can see that it's a blue number taking damage. My health, the red bar down there is not moving at all. Again, I would not suggest just tanking hits like this, but if you have armor. You can, uh, again, get through some more fights because if you do accidentally take a hit, you forget to block soon enough. You'll have armor to block that. And then once your armor is taken a few hits, you can go in and repair it with your repair smithy very, very easily. And now we've used a smithy and our armor is as good as new. I will say one more note on the armor. It does not apply to things like shadow damage, poison damage, or despair that you can take. It's only physical damage that enemies can do to you. And sometimes I found it to be a little bit hit or miss in terms of if it registers correctly. If you are having issues, especially multiplayer, try taking your armor off and putting it back on. If it's not registering at all that you have it on, that might fix it. But... I think it's just one of those things that we might get a little patch for or a hot fix for, but for the most part, it works okay for me, but there are times where I definitely take health damage when I shouldn't be. Now, next up are the Muzna cans. This is the Muzna can of Ori's line, and we need to replace the missing carvings that are kind of honoring this family, uh, this Corbin family. And if we do so, we'll be able to open this up like a chest and take some loot out of it. Now, I'll put it on the screen very quickly, kind of what these look like, at least where you can find them on the ground. I don't think the spas are the same every single time, although I think some of them have been for players. So if you are lost, Try checking these, but for the most part, I would suggest trying to explore if there are any kind of open areas where there's a kind of rectangle showing uh, a room, uh, you know, where another room might be. Continue exploring and checking those out. But once you replace all those, uh, for this, you're going to get the shield recipe, the heirloom shield, as well as the trapper hat helmet, which is the tier two helmet, which is which is very good. So if you do collect all those before you move on to the elven area, you'll have a helmet and a better shield to move forward with. Now, like I said, there are different blocks in the game. That's kind of what I'm going to call these different areas here. And since the game is procedurally generated, everyone's map is going to look different. So everyone's going to have the same areas like the elven quarter down here or the, kind of the doors of Durin or whatever main things that are going to be in the game. But what blocks are around them and, and where things are is going to be different for you. So where I found Ori statues in, for example, let's say I found them in this block right here, you might find them in a totally different block that's much harder, much easier. In my first playthrough, I had to explore a lot more. In this one where I did these kind of kind of quick video grabs here, I found them very, very quickly. So it's gonna be hit or miss for you, but if you can't find something, whether it be the carvings or just are trying to progress the story, uh, definitely keep exploring through because there are different blocks. As long as there is a little kind of offshoot square right here, it means right here and here, there's gonna be a, a, a new room that opens up. If there is not, if it's just a flat line, uh, that means these are dead ends and there's nothing else beyond that point. So as long as you've got what you want in that room, there's nothing else to explore. And next up are these damage statues you can find. And you do need to build that iron hammer we talked about earlier. So if you have an iron hammer and you have stone, you can click to rebuild these statues. And this is how you unlock different crafting recipes. So in this case right now, we actually just got a gold coin added. That means that we have unlocked every recipe by way of statue in this immediate Western Halls area. If you haven't gotten these statues yet, you'll unlock things like the armor. We learned how to craft the Iron Hills armor and the Iron Hills gloves. But if you start getting the gold coins, that means at least in that immediate area, you've probably gotten all the recipes this way. Now, there's really no downside to repairing them, but I'd go ahead and just repair them all just to make sure. But if you are looking for new recipes and you're finding the statues and they give you gold, try going to a new area. So for us, the next area we get more at is gonna be in the Elven Corridor down here. It is worth noting that in that Elven Corridor, and really as the game progresses, you're gonna be able to build better hammers. So now we have a steel hammer instead of an iron hammer, which we'll learn to build very soon once we have access to steel. And you need that steel hammer to rebuild the statues in the Elven Corridor. Now, once you've kind of built your base up a little bit, built some of your weapons and tools, repaired statues to get access to armor, you should have something looking close to what I have here. Save a few things we're gonna to learn to make in the Elven area you should be pretty much ready to move on to the next spot. So let's go ahead and go to where the Elven Cavern is. Your path to this exact spot might be a little bit different, but you will have a waypoint that says shortcut to the mine. So if you follow to this point, you'll come into the, the room looking exactly like this. There'll be a ruined monument right here and a kind of packed dirt area that says shortcut to the mine. So we're going to go through here and mine through. If this guy will ignore us, we're just going to let him be. And we're going to come into this area that has a barricade right here. I'll put it on the screen so you can see what it looks like before that, as well as a note from the king right here and an old message from Gandalf. Now, this is the part that has confused a few players, including myself, for longer than it should, so I want to make it very, very clear. I've also done an entire video on this just separately. It's like a minute long, 
uh, you're going to walk into the Elven Cavern. It's going to, you know, kind of marvel at how there's an Elven Cavern here in the first place. And it just says, find the entrance to the mines. And the, the waypoint for that is kind of right here. So what I did is kind of run around everywhere in here and just went all the wrong directions and it find it. So very quickly before we do anything else, I want to show you guys where the entrance to the mine is. We'll need to build some things before we go there. But if that's the part you're stuck on, I'm going to show that very quickly. So from the entrance, we went in. So we walked in here to the entrance of the Elven Cavern. We're just going to turn left and follow this road path here. Down these stairs, and there's a bridge we're going to go across still to the left. And you're going to start to see it in the distance there. There is a statue with a blue lantern. There's going to be another one that kind of comes into view in a second on the left side. And if we just keep following this path, you're going to see it opens up. And there is a doorway right there. That is the doorway into the mines, the secret entrance into the mines. And all we have to do to get in there is make a steel pickaxe, which we're going to do in one second. So we'll be going there in a second. But I want to show you a few more things that we can make because we've entered into this elven area. Now, like I mentioned, there are orcish chests like this one here. And you need to break the banners in the middle of the areas, which I'll show on the screen again in case you missed that. And I would definitely suggest going through. I think there's five of these little kind of camps like this. Kill the goblin men. Take the key from the banner and open those chests and get all the stuff out of them because it's going to unlock some more stuff for us. Now, it's also worth noting that pretty much everything in the elven area is very useful to us. So not only do we have these kind of elf gear looking things that if we take out, we're going to get hide and meat we can use. We also have a number of different fruits like the crab apples. We have different flowers and things that grow like the Elbreth's Blessing as well as other ones that are in the area. Pretty much everything in this area can be and should be harvested. The trees give you elven wood, which we'll cover in a second. But everything in this area is extremely useful. You really can't overgather in this area. And next up, we have another Muznikin statue, which is going to also open up and unlock some different things. Actually, you can unlock another helmet and another type of shield for us. So uh, those crafting recipes are not as rare, but we do find steel in here, which is going to allow us to get the steel items we need made much more quickly. So all you have to do is break up on those uh, goblin chests that you we talked about earlier. You'll get four of them that way, and then one of them is going to be found. And I'll put it on the screen really quickly here. One of them will be found in a building. So I think it's the same for every single world. Uh, and I'll put on the map kind of so you can see where the building was that we saw. So check there first. Uh, if not, comment and see if other people have seen uh, in different locations. But for the most part, from what I've seen, it's always one in that building and four from the different chests that you get from breaking the banners, getting the key, and opening up. Now, there's a few more things I'm going to cover before we move on to the last few parts in this area before we move on to the actual entrance to the mines. First of all is the workbench. Once we get elven wood, we can craft the workbench. And it just takes uh, 15 of the elven wood and two of the iron ingots. This is really cool because it will allow us to craft a hunting bow as well as arrows with wood scraps, metal fragments, and elven wood and hide scraps. This makes it a lot easier to hit the elf running around here or different animals in the map, as well as enemies that are far away. Uh, again, they are a tier two ammo. The arrows are tier two, so it does actually produce some damage. You don't have to be that careful with using them because they're not too rare to make. Now, as you get to more rare ones that require bronze and feathers and those things we'll talk about in the future, uh, you might want to be a little bit more careful, but with these, you can just craft a bunch of them and feel free to use them like crazy. This is also where you can craft an adventurer's pack, which is the first backpack upgrade you get in the game. Prior to this, we just have 10 slots. Now we have 25 and you get all the hide that you need for the adventurer's pack from taking out things like bears or the elk in the area. So I would again suggest making the hunting bow arrows. Go take a bunch of elks. The bears don't really give you a lot for how difficult they are. So you can just avoid them but honestly they're killable with your fist too we actually were playing earlier and our weapons broke and we just punched a bear to death so they're not that hard just keep blocking and after a couple minutes we'll take it down you can also make your different helmets even lock so from the the different muslin cans we open we have the long bottom hat as well as the trapper hat they're both tier two hats so it's just kind of dealer's choice here the long bottom hat does use steel so i would go with the trapper hat that's going to give you a little bit of extra armor nothing crazy but you do get that recipe from opening Ori's Muznikin. So once you've done that, you can craft it in the workbench. Now, a few more things before we fix the forge and move on here to the next area. Uh, these things are just helpful in general. So I wanted to cover them because you can make them at this point. I have not yet. Uh, but the first one is going to be a memorial flame and you get these hero tokens by honoring the fallen dwarven remains that you find around the area. So if you find a dwarven remain, you can take a knee and honor it. You'll get a hero token. Once you have five, you can build uh, this memorial flame and if you interact with it you're going to get a bonus status effect which is going to help you recover energy a little bit faster the next thing is the treasure cache you can put these treasure caches on the ground with the gold that you find and if you admire them you're going to get a bonus as well so typically in our bases we build a treasure cache and the memorial flame and before we go out you just interact with these to get some slight status effects this one is the horde fierce it says admires some dwarven treasure small bonus to damage against orcs and those bonuses get bigger the larger your treasure caches are or the more kind of uh, treasure you have inside of them so again get creative with it but if you have the flame the memorial flame 
and the treasure cache, you can get a bonus, which are especially helpful if you're getting raided because the, they don't last forever, but they do last for a little bit. But if they're coming to you and showing up to your base, you can just keep getting that bonus. And again, it doesn't hurt you. So I would build those if you can. Now, if you've been following along uh, so far, you should have in your hot board kind of what I have here, which is the hunting bow, arrows, the iron sword, the heirloom shield, and a torch if you like. And we're going to be building the upgraded version of our pickaxe and our hammer, the steel pickaxe and the steel hammer, which are going to allow us to A, mine through the into the next area, and then B, use the steel hammer in this area to repair more statues and get different recipes for better gear, better weapons, all that kind of stuff. Now, next up is the Great Forge in Navari. This is in the Elven area at the very, very south. So if you just go straight down from where you come in, or rather around the middle and go down to the south area, you're going to find this forge here. And you'll find three parts scattered around the area. If for some reason you've lost them, uh, you can uh, you can make them. If you go to the recipe list and go to the forge, you'll see that you can make these replacement kind of pieces here. So if, if something happened, you could do that. But they are around here. Usually two in here and one's right outside, like in the middle area down there. So you need to go and put the uh, different pieces here. And I'll put some stuff on the screen so you guys can see what that looks like. The one on the right, the pipe, you have to make some platforms because you can't jump with it. But you could use the R button to throw it up to the next level. But uh, once you get those on there, you'll activate the Great Navari Forge and it will spawn a horde. So be ready before you activate this, have your, you know, your armor repaired, have your weapons repaired, ready to go, full health, all that kind of stuff, because a horde of goblin men and goblins will spawn. And this is where you should get your first black diamond to drop. So it's actually a pretty cool time. So as long as you can get through that, again, if you don't, it makes you have a bed nearby in your base uh, so you can run back quickly. But once you get through this, you'll have access to this forge as well as some decent loot from the horde that attacked you, including, again, the first black diamond to repair your map stone. Now, once you have access to this forge, you'll have access to the steel ingot recipe, and you can either do it in this forge or one in your base. I just do it in my base because all my stuff is there. So if you go back to your base, and you use iron ore as well as coal, you can then start making steel. And with that steel, you can make a steel pickaxe and a steel hammer with a combination of hide, elven wood, and those steel ingots that you've just made. And then at that point, your inventory should look exactly like mine does with pretty much everything as upgraded as it can be. And now we are finally here. Again, I've already gone through, but as you can see, we can use our steel pickaxe to mine this compacted dirt very, very easily. And we're going to have our first entrance into the actual mines here. And that is where uh, part one of our tutorial is going to end. There's a lot more to talk about in this next area, like the addition of different ores to make new materials, new weapons, new armor, new enemies, all kinds of stuff. It's going to get very, very exciting. But this is already going to be relatively long. So again, hopefully you guys find this helpful. Let me know down below if I missed anything in that first section. This was meant to be very, very simple for anyone just wanting to get a general overview of the very, very first kind of couple hours of the game, especially if you've not played it, just being able to see everything you could have access to or what different things can look like. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. But that'll do it for this one. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on part two, which is going to be dropping very, very soon, covering from this point in the mines to the entrance of the Crystal Depths. Oh.